Welcome to my Dragon Ball Super episode 71 review in which I'm going to be talking about the episode of course and before we get started I did want to notate that recently there was a video that I put up with Real to Real and we talk about the potential of Broly being in the series. Now it's not about whether or not you like Broly but it's just you know fun ways you can introduce him into the series so check that out if you haven't already. Also a lot of Dragon Ball news has dropped this week. I have covered a lot of it not every little piece of it because there's been so much between Dokkan between Xenoverse between Dragon Ball Super and the upcoming arc and I've covered a lot of it if you're interested in that on the channel go to my uploads they're all recent there but without further ado let's go ahead and get into the video so the episode is it's a fun one right like it's not really good it's not really bad bad in any way shape or form i think that the hit stuff in the episode was amazing i think it was really well executed basically what happens is the episode starts off with goku kind of it was weird right because they basically showed you the end of the episode and the beginning of the episode and i was like wait wait what 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 did i miss i'm like did i miss something like it might what <laughs> and I, I rewinded it and i was like wait no this is the beginning of the episode so let me know if you guys did the same thing because they show you the cliffhanger with goku being dead and stuff like that and his face overshadowed and stuff like that and uh then it cuts to the title screen and stuff like that of the episode and i'm like what the hell just happened okay and then it was weird too because it immediately killed the tension with goku just chilling outside training and I was like, oh, okay. So, yeah, this is where the episode starts. Okay, gotcha. You just spoiled your own ending for me. Even though I already knew what was going to happen, right? But, like, you just kind of, it was weird. I didn't really, I wasn't partial to it. It just was kind of different. So, there's that. But it cuts to Goku training. And then it cuts to him, basically, at the table with his family. He tells Chi-Chi that there's cockroaches behind the fridge, I think. And, you know, they, they make note that Goku's been acting weird because He's been basically with his eyes closed, been focusing, been trying to sense what's around him and stay very aware of his surroundings. Because as you find out later in the episode, when he's talking to Gohan and Goten after they tail him all through the city and stuff like that. And, you know, they have a lot of sitcom and funny stuff. I, I, another thing is, too. I'm 100% sold after the comedy parts of this episode that, you know, Dragon Ball could be like an epic sitcom. Like, <laughs> it could be pretty funny, man, because they just do comedy, right? Some people don't really find enjoyment in it because they only care about the serious nature of Dragon Ball. But, you know, if you've been watching Dragon Ball Super, you're kind of used to it. Otherwise, you're, you don't really care about it. But I do understand that. Nonetheless, I pretty much digress there. But what happens is he tells Goten and Gohan that, you know, I am basically staying aware because somebody wants my life somebody's going to kill me and they cut over to hit on like this dark rainy planet and this the atmosphere is really suiting to that character and i'm like oh shit this looks lit and i'm like okay is this his planet like where is he at of course he's in universe six because the there's a, a big uh, screen out there and it's talking about how frost is a fugitive and he's still on the run so i think it's pretty safe to say that frost won't be at the tournament um you know it sounds like somehow they all kind of figured him out i don't know who really who snitched on it was probably kava because kava's forces are hunting him so there's that and you know mark kind of did a video about whether or not saiyans are evil in universe six that's on real to real's channel um it kind of doesn't sound like it because they're hunting frost but i digress again Mark's one of my friends, so I'm not going to say anything about that. Anyways, um, you know, obviously they're in Universe 6, and there's he's on the planet. He's just walking with his hands in his pocket. It's lit. He's walking to, like, this castle behind a gated community, and he's, like, stopping time, and they don't even see him going through. It's just weird. Like, they're literally putting an emphasis on his abilities. He's just walking past everybody, walking past all the guards, and basically he gets over to, like, that fat mobster guy that everybody kind of prognosticated i got you danny i got you geeked him anyways uh that everybody kind of thought was you know the the guy that ordered the hit on goku prior to us actually finding out who that was we do know who hired the hit the hit job on goku of hit you know through the spoilers and stuff that came out this week another video i have on the channel if you want to check that out if you are interested if you happen to fall between the cracks and didn't know something crazy but you know, we, we, we thought that that was him, but apparently not. Hit is there to actually take a job out on that guy. And that guy's like, do you want money? Do you want, you know, I can give you this building. What do you want? I got all that stuff. It's like, no, thank you. And I was like, damn, this guy's honor is through the roof because, I mean, you think about it, right? Like, I don't know the logistics of being a hitman, right? Of course, because I'm not. But, uh, or am I? No. Um, But he was like, my, my whole thing was like in my head, like, I would think those guys would be really easy to buy off. You know, because they're being paid to do the job in the first place. 
all you got to really do is offer them more money. But I do understand, you know, they've got the honor, like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to, you know, change on my client like that. So I do get that. I just was kind of interesting. So hit winds up just one shot in that guy. I, you kind of would expect that, right? He doesn't seem like he's a strong guy at all. And then hit pulls out like this little hologram of his next target he presses a button and goku shows up and he smirks and he crushes it and i'm like oh this guy's lit and then goku's like oh you're finally coming and so he sends them and he flies off to like this desolate area with nothing but like atmosphere and uh you know he powers up to blue piccolo immediately knows that they can't sense him so piccolo goten and gohan go fly off this is something interesting um goten in this episode is a little different right because let's say this logistically speaking goten and trunks should be about 13 and 14 years old at this point they should be that regardless of how they look you know dragon ball super refuses to age them as characters but they cannot deny that time is passing regardless of how they're designing these characters they're about 13 and 14 years old and you know this because a couple of hints are in there that Goten's gotten older whenever he and Gohan are tailing the city and, you know, Gohan puts on the same man outfit. He's like, Goten, you two. And Goten's like, no, those are lame. Gohan's like, you used to think these were cool. You know, like that's one of the things that's a sign of him growing up. And of course, Goten is, doesn't have the same interests. If you go off GT as Gohan, he's not a, he's not a square, but <clears throat> once again, another instance is when he Gohan was like, Goten, you stay here. And he was like, no, don't treat me like a kid. I'm like, bro, you are a kid technically. Right. But, He's a little older. He's like a teenager now. So, like, there are hints in here that Goten and Trunks are a little older at this point. And they should be because, you know, Go Trunks should be about the age that he was, that future Trunks was around the time that Gohan died in his timeline. So, it's kind of weird, but it's I don't know how long they can continue not to age these characters when it's becoming blatantly obvious that they're just not doing it for, for I guess, for simplicity purposes and probably for marketing and stuff like that. But that's one thing I wanted to point out. But back to Hit and Goku. Goku and Hit show up in the field. And Hit's like, do you want to get away? I'll let you get away. And I'll tell them that I killed you. And Goku's like, no, of course. Because Goku wouldn't say yes to that. That was interesting to hear Hit say that too. You know, speaking of honor, that's him lying about killing somebody and taking the payment too. So Hit's not above that either. So I don't know where his head is. But maybe that's more or less because it's Goku. And, you know, he has a relation with Goku. So he was going to spare his life, which is understandable as well. And Goku's like, no, 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 no. And he's like, I've been training all year and you're still a little faster than me because he powers up and hit was behind him. And I was like, wait a minute, training all year. Now, I know there have been time skips, right? And they don't. The thing is that Dragon Ball Super never really explicitly states their time skips, but there were time skips in there. You just really have to pay attention to what they say. Um, And he says all year. That would imply to me that it's been a significant amount of time since the universe tournament arc between universe six and universe seven. So it's weird, too. And and then looking at like, see, the thing about it is, too, is I can just keep plugging videos. MJ Geeklist and I, we talked about the possibility of like, you know, where hit ranks among all these characters in the video like a few weeks ago. This completely skewers that because the main argument has always been that, you know, at manga hit if you watch if you read the manga he's significantly weaker than goku was and then logically you'd say okay well all that goku black stuff and the training and all that stuff goku would have to be significantly stronger because hit would be a character that would be as strong as he would need to be at that time right but they're reintroducing hit in the next arc i'm assuming he's going to be in the next tournament arc but the thing is that you know the main argument was that hit couldn't use his fighting technique so we really don't know in this it's shown that he he's able to one shot Goku, a character who is significantly stronger, I'd say than he was around the time that they initially fought. And it's, it's mind boggling to me that he did it so effortlessly. He was like, turn around. My motto is a one shot straight to from the front. And Goku's like, you're not going to edit in one shot. And hit just shoots a shockwave. Literally. He doesn't even punch him. It's just like, you know, the, the force, (laughs) <laughs> the force is with you. No, the force literally crushes Goku's heart and kills Goku. And he falls flat there with his eyes open and everything. So, like, Hit is crazy. <laughs> he is really powerful, you know. And um, it, it was just kind of interesting because, like I said, the main argument with the Hit character has always been that, you know, he can use his fighting technique. So how strong is he really, right? So I want to get your thoughts on that as well. But, you know, the episode hangs off right there. 
I'm not going to talk about the next episode preview or anything like that because I don't want to do that in this video. But if you guys do want me to do a predictions video, I will do that. I mean, it's kind of weird doing predictions because we we have spoilers, right? We know what's going to happen. But nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoy today's video. Please subscribe to the channel if you happen to be new. Let me know your thoughts on the episode. The hit stuff is only going to be for a few episodes. It's going to be self-contained. However, it does seem like it will lead into the next arc. And more or less, I kind of didn't talk about it here. But another thing is just I want to toss out that Vegeta was training with Whis. And Beerus basically hinted at the tournament. He said Zeno can ask for it at any time. He also said Goku will be the team leader. So Whis needs to be training Goku and focusing on Goku, which triggered Vegeta rightfully so because he's like, you're going to like act like I'm shit and I'm right in front of you. Really? <laughs> so obviously that would trigger Vegeta. And I, I and Whis was a little partial in the episode. It was almost like he knew what was going on. And I would it will make sense if you know the spoilers uh, as far as like who hired hit once again. It he almost seemed like he knew what was going on and like the whole hit thing was part of Goku's training. So I don't know if that was more or less Vegeta putting words in his mouth or if that was Whis giving off that vibe, but that's interesting too. Something I wanted to kind of mention before we got out of here. But anyways, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.